Hi everyone, Roger here from Mastercard Experts YouTube channel and today we're going to be performing a cylinder leakage test. A cylinder leakage test tests for sealing of the combustion chamber, that's the valves and the piston rings. That makes this a very important tool when trying to diagnose engine problems because you can try to identify if the problem is coming from the intake valves, exhaust valves, or through the bottom end through the piston rings. This great tool can also help you identify if you have a leak in between your cylinders or if you have a leak that's leaking into the cooling system. Now I would recommend getting a quality cylinder leakage tester. I bought one from Harbor Freight. This is a snap-on one now. The Harbor Freight one didn't even last one attempt and it failed immediately. Unfortunately, I had kept it for over 60 days because I had planned on using it and I didn't use it, so they wouldn't even take it back as a return. We're gonna get right into this. There's a couple of things you're gonna to need to do to prepare for, for a cylinder leakage test, and that's going to have access to the central bolt and to take out the plugs and coils on your vehicle. This is a BMW Z3 with an M54 engine, but this really can be applied to any engine. Most of these kits come with multiple adapters, but how do you figure out which one is the right one? Well, I wouldn't recommend just trying to screw it in because you could cross thread something. Take your spark plug and take a wrench. You find the right size wrench, and if it matches over the spark plug, and this is a 14 millimeter wrench, that is also the adapter you need, and you can match it up that way. This also is a 14 millimeter adapter. Then you can just take a look at the threads, cross them over, make sure they match. This is the adapter I need. Now you do need a shop compressor or a small compressor to do this test, but this test is very simple to do realistically. And I'm gonna show you all the steps. You screw that into the spark plug hole, and I'm going to be turning the engine over with my breaker bar right here. And I need to set up my gauges, and I'll explain exactly what you're going to be looking for and how to determine where the leak is coming from. If you like the content I provide, you can join Zion and me on Ask the Car Experts YouTube channel. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you're interested in becoming a member, the perks that I would provide is one-on-one -on -one help with uh, your BMW problems and questions. So don't forget to check out the member perks. This tool is used to inject pressurized air using a compressor into the cylinder. And I'm gonna turn the engine over by hand slowly and watch for the lowest reading on the gauge to see what my percentage of leakage is. And at the same time, we can determine if it's coming from the intake, exhaust, or adjacent cylinders or into the cooling system. The first thing that you have to do with this tool though is you do have to zero it out. So I have my compressed air I'm gonna attach. This end is gonna to attach to the adapter that's going into the cylinder. All right, the first step is to zero out the gauge. So we're going to start applying the air pressure. And I keep, I'm gonna to wanna to keep adding air pressure until my gauge reaches zero leakage here. And this is basically gonna be zeroing out the gauge. At 100 PSI here, my gauge is about zero. And that's how you start the setup. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach this to my cylinder. If you were just looking at general instructions on how to do this, it tells you to put the piston at top dead center. That's when all the valves are closed. And there's an easier way, and that's just to turn the engine over by hand until you get the lowest reading and hold it there. Because a lot of times the piston's gonna be pushed down by the air anyways, and it's gonna wanna walk back. So you're gonna need to hold the piston in place. And then turn the engine over by hand, hopefully before my compressor turns on. And you can see here, that's my leak. The leak is relatively low, but there's something happening here. There's air leaking into the adjacent cylinder. So I have a leak between cylinder one and cylinder two between the head gasket. Now surprisingly, my leakage was relatively low, around 20%, but I can't have a leak between, one, between cylinder one and cylinder two and have proper combustion. 
If you check out my video for compression testing, you'll see what the compression readings all were and how to perform a compression test. My guess is I was losing compression between cylinder one and cylinder two during that test. I'll put the link right up in the corner here. So there's a few major paths that you're gonna lose air on, and that's on the exhaust side. If you have an issue with an exhaust valve not sealing, you can actually feel the air coming out of the exhaust pipe. If we had a leak on the intake side valves, and here's the intake manifold here, you'd hear the air coming through into the intake manifold. If you had a leak in the cylinder head that was leaking into the cooling system, or if you had a crack on the head or a leak between uh, the ceiling of the cylinder head and the coolant jackets, you would actually see bubbles coming out if this was full or you'd have air coming out of the reservoir. Uh, now I know I have a problem between cylinders one and cylinder two. I know that my valves are sealing because I had looked at those with a test long 270 degree boroscope and I saw that my valves were closing correctly on the intake and exhaust. I have a video on that also. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the corner. It's actually a pretty awesome tool to have. But I'm going to skip cylinder two because I already know I have a leak between one and two. Let's see what kind of issues we have in cylinder three. So right now I have high leakage, but that's because I'm probably not at top dead center. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the engine over by hand. That is a lot of leakage. So I can't even get the cylinder to seal right here. You can hear the air. Pretty sure that's also coming through cylinder two. So I threw some coils in to see if I could get a tone change. And right there. So I'll actually have a leak between cylinders one and two and three and four. Let's check five and six last, just to see what we have going on here. A little hard to hear. Yep. So five and four have adjacent leaks. You know, I don't hear anything in cylinder six. Turn the engine over and see what kind of reading we can get. So very high leakage. I can't. There we go. Now we're starting to get her to seal. So that's my leakage, pretty high. Yeah, that's a lot. I have very high leakage between cylinders five and four. You can feel, I can feel the air coming out of that. And you can see on my gauge, I had very high leakage. I'm surprised that we saw low leakage on cylinders one and two, even though they were leaking between each other. This must be a very large gap between the cylinder head. So let's pop this off. That gave me a lot of great information. Now I know that I need to take a look, obviously, at the entire block when I pull this head out. I'm gonna be removing the cylinder head on this engine. I'm gonna have everyone join me as I do that. We're gonna go through the full steps. Uh, there's a lot involved. It's gonna be a fun project for me to share with everyone. Now I don't know if this is gonna result in a full engine replacement. I'm going to try to have the cylinder head resurfaced and use an oversized head gasket, but I don't know what I'm gonna find when I remove the cylinder head. Am I gonna find damage to the block? If I send the head out and have it uh, check for cracks, maybe there's a crack in the head. This vehicle was overheated accidentally from a previous owner who didn't shut the vehicle off after they had a radiator failure. When the ra upper radiator neck blew off, the previous owner continued to drive the vehicle, which caused the engine to overheat. That's one of the most common ways for a head gasket to fail is an overheat situation. It's not necessarily the head gasket that causes the overheat. It's usually something else that causes it once the overheat starts. On this particular engine, the block material can weaken and the head bolts start to lift. The tension between the cylinder head and the block is lost. Then you end up with a leak all throughout the cylinders. I also have a video explaining a test you can do for your head gasket and I'll put a link up in the corner for you if you're interested in that video. In that video, I go over some great tips on how to check to see if your cylinder head 
is compromised. It's time to prep this baby for a big overhaul and getting this cylinder head off. It's gonna be a fun project. Thanks for joining me everyone. Hopefully you learned something about how a cylinder leakage tester works and what its purpose is. I'm going to actually be smoke testing this vehicle using this Ansel smoke tester, which is another awesome tool that I always have on hand. This has an internal air pump, which you don't need an external compressor for. And I already tested this out. It actually has a ton of volume. This actually is gonna be my new go-to tool for smoke testing vehicles at home. Pretty excited to get into this project with everyone. Please remember to like, subscribe, and post a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I will talk to you soon.